fine. We'll figure it out. Oh boy, here we are. Hey everybody, welcome so prepared. to the Pocket Dragon Cub. Uh, yes, we are super duper prepared tonight. But yes, once again, <laughs> hello and welcome to the Pocket Dragon Pub. This is the uh, show Q&A for the Blood Red Bedlam campaign. Woo! Woo! Uh, as you know, uh, season one uh, wrapped earlier last, uh, like last year. Was it last year already? How long has it been since we started Blood Red Bedlam? Anyway, season one is over and now we're heading into season two. Uh, my name is Vixie and I will be hosting this little Q&A tonight. Um, very night you're the best <laughs> don't lie to them oh my god um but yes thank you for joining us and uh, a big thanks to our mod who is one may or may not be wandering around there somewhere hobbit on wheels uh sh if you have any questions she will be on the lookout for them and let us know um feel free to around. post them yes feel free to post them in the live chat and we'll do our best to answer them and don't forget, you can collect fairy dragon scales throughout the stream and can redeem them for a toast. Just hit the dragon scale that has cheers next to it. So, and with that said, uh, for season two of Blood Red Bedlam, which will be opening up in April, uh, let's welcome back our table regulars, Lev, Bex, Roman, Bookish, and myself. Uh, and we also want to extend a warm welcome to our brand new Dungeon Master for Season 2, Knight. Welcome, Knight. Welcome to the table. We're so excited to have you. Well, so, I'm excited to be. Hello. Woo! Um, Aloha. Just, we're super excited to have Knight uh, Dungeon Mastering Aloha. this uh, this game for us. And I can't wait to see uh, what direction the Red Badgers wind up taking. Downwards. For sure. It's all downhill. Oh god. We're going to Avernus, everyone. <laughs> it's all downhill. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. Oh yeah. Hobbit is Hobbit is wheeling and dealing. Oh Lord. It's already begun. <laughs> You're welcome. You're but welcome yes. And uh Yes, and just as a side note, you can find um, members of the table in on Twitch as well. Lev has a wonderful art channel that they stream art sometimes. Usually, art from of Ed, I think is right is the current news right now because yes. we love Ed. <laughs> we, um, yeah, we, we, you yeah. need to put we yourself in that category. Oh, love Ed. Um, but uh, Eric's and name, also, well. Me. <laughs> Like Barracks will come we're, around eventually. We're, we're, we're working yes. on it. We're working on we're, it. He's been kind of mean. There. Oh no. Um, and Knight, of course, has a channel as well, Nightlight95 on Twitch. He does a lot of gaming. Uh, as I keep being reminded that these are mo these are not movies, they are games. <laughs> um, but granted, I do know Elden Ring is a game, and that was what we were playing last time. So, yep. uh, but with, yes, Ed, look, we already have Ed fan people in the house. Yay! Ed, <laughs> cheers okay. as well. Cheers. That's okay because you know who else has a fan club? Bram. Bram has the fan club as well. Um, the amount of times I was like, I heard Bram in the chat during Blood Red Bedlam. Oh my god! Praise for that. <laughs> <laughs> what can you, you? What can't help it? Bram's great. But let's also, uh, so let's get started with some questions, shall we? No. My no? first question is: uh, Can Bex make sure they're not muted? Are you muted? Oh no, Beck! <laughs> oh no, Beck! <laughs> 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 I love you. Really mute ourselves and yeah. forget about it. It's fine. Well, and here I was, like, we're going to roll a natural 20 on technical difficulties, and it was more of a 15, but that's fine. We're fine. It's okay. Dirty 20. It's a dirty 20. <laughs> It's a dirty twenty. Yes. Um, oh man. Speaking of, I hope I I I highly encourage everyone to see the new D and D movie. It's a lot of fun. Um, but just to if you can, whether or not you pay to see it, I'm not going to advise you as to which. But anyway, uh, let's get to some questions before I get myself in any more trouble. <laughs> um, so let's start off with the first question. We all know at the table here, maybe our audience may not know this, but Blood Red Bedlam was the first campaign to be broadcast at the Pocket Dragon Pub. So how did you all feel when you were initially approached to join the table? I wasn't approached. You were just told you were what? doing it? No, I applied. Oh yeah, that's true, you applied. That's right, your situation is different. 
<laughs> See, I demand you it to be. You weren't kidnapped table. in your sleep and taken to the table, and I was like, "You're playing D and D now." <laughs> no, I, I applied. Well, that's what happened to me? I applied, and then, oh, no. and then I entered the Discord, and there was like a ten grimy hands come with a goddess. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. No, Vixie full on kidnapped me in the middle of the night, and next thing I knew, I was, was playing D and D. Basically, it's like, how did I get here? Roll for initiative. I chloroformed <laughs> you. That's <laughs> smart. <laughs> it was the good berry. She lured you in, gave you a good berry. That's what it was. And knocked you know? out. And well, she told me I could play a druid, and the rest was history. Yeah. That's it. There you go. <laughs> Finally. Um, but yeah, anyone else want to weigh in? Love's over there like, I was also kidnapped, but I can't say anything. For I wasn't kidnapped. I was, just, <laughs> I was just ready to play. Yeah. <laughs> we, we we said yes to the concept and demanded yeah. to be a part of the adventure. I mean, not really take, demanded, um, but, you know. I'll make characters and play another... games beyond healthy points so i will i will continue to i'll, I'll just add them on to my to my schedule <laughs> oh my yes just, they just we'll find a day we'll make some time it's fine yeah it's like i'll just i'll i'll show up i'll Mix be there and i play another game regularly and after one of the sessions she came up to me and she was like hey do you like horror games and i'm like yes Yes, I do. And she said, would you want to play one? And I said, yes, yes, I would. And that was kind of it. <laughs> that, was, that was how it yes, all started. Yes, history. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah, no, it's significantly more boring story the more I tell it. <laughs> <laughs> but don't worry. We'll add some, we'll, we'll work on it. We'll, we'll embellish it. We'll throw in some we'll dragons or something. <laughs> yep. I think for <laughs> with, <laughs> me, with me, you were just discussing the idea of doing a stream. And I yes. offered the help. Mm -hmm if you needed assistance in setting one up yeah. and, and it was all history uh, immediately me. locked down all the social platforms with the name yeah as i recall <laughs> because she was like so everything is done we can go wait yeah. what yeah. just happened <laughs> uh, because book is <laughs> um okay so next question why did you guys choose to create the characters that you did for the initial campaign? Like, why did you choose your particular class? Like, where do these characters sort of come from? I love tieflings. And I love uh, trans people. And I love the allegory you can play with and all the things that can be played with in those two identities being shared in the same body and so i also really wanted to play a druid and that was kind of the biggest thing for me in making bram was um building a building a, a, a little man who's taken his own life in his own hands after a long time and then had it ripped from him had mm. that world he built ripped from him and he's been sent to this random place so i really wanted to play with that very cool okay. um i know that bookish and i had been in a well when when blood red Beldum was like initially talked about it was uh sort of like a um and like hey do you want to play this strad like adjacent <laughs> like <laughs> a horror style campaign um because three of us had been in one before that had been cut short and we barely got to really play our characters in it and like slowly they sort of like fell out of the mm -hmm. you know that party um and my character for that who and i i made moira for a strad campaign um mm -hmm. she was meant to be creepy spooky and totally just like f filled in any sort of like space in that sort of environment. I don't, I only got to play her for maybe a couple of sessions. So she felt very like underused and mm -hmm. there was like a lot of potential with her. And I thought she was so fucking cool. So I was like any opportunity to play Moira again, I was like, yes, I need to do this. I need to redo this because that was so wasted before. Yeah. So Moira was built for a spooky horror type campaign and now she's 
just she's gotten so much better <laughs> since then since she's i had thriving. time with her yeah she's yeah, fucking awesome has the best thriving. phrases Zavina uh -huh. her. for sure my god that's my obsession with looking up random like bits of anonymous poetry and like old <laughs> old quotes and things like that. Yeah. So uh, points if you guess where they come from when I'm I use them. I'm so <laughs> obsessed with it. I'm obsessed with it. That could be a total game. Like if someone points it out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna put that. <laughs> um, Note to yeah. self. Like you should get bonus inspiration points. points to those who guess proper <laughs> quote. Not they it. should get channel yeah. points for finding yeah. the right quote. Channel oh, points. Man. No, not even. Well, I mean, if you guys want to do channel points, that's fine. But I was thinking, like, uh, if no part of she's a bard, right? Mori is a bard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, like, if she does this random quote, if one of the players wants to be like, oh, I know that quote, it's from this, I'll, I, I'll, I'll give you a D6 inspiration. Yeah. Ooh, fabulous. You want me to that's use my brain? <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> Zavina's if I gotta head, do it, you got to. Zavina's the most empty. obscure. Okay, this is gonna be a fun game. Yes. I I only really play himbo characters because they are just personality, not intellect. Because that's they're me. So, yes, they're Shit, so now I'm gonna have that to go back to. That was my biggest to... mistake with Bram. Is Bram's much smarter than I am. <laughs> I know that. And kinder. I know that. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Uh, I, just, <laughs> I just, I just saw someone it's in Bram's totally camera. Just... I know who, I know who it was, but I don't want to put them out there like that. Poor thing. <laughs> uh, but it's all good. So, um, Bookish, tell us about Zavina. Well, Why did you make um, Zavina? Um, I one? wanted to play a little more chaotic character that just acts on impulse. Um, I knew that regardless of what I attempted, my character was probably going to be the cinnamon roll of the group, because <laughs> it's what I do. It's uh, what I excel at. Um, I learned to embrace said thing. I'm trying to get more, a little more chaotic. Um, yes! So it's, expect your characters to wake up with a few surprises, maybe. Oh no! <laughs> I'm so Nothing excited. that will maim you, but I will be cracking up the whole time. Because I'm just gonna Zavina, it will be charming. it, and yes. then I will hold it up for you so you know what you're seeing if you look in a, like a reflective surface. <laughs> I love I it. Cannot wait. Um, but I also always really wanted to play a goblin character for quite a long time, probably since I first initially started. But um, they weren't always a playable race initially mm -hmm. when I started, so. Or at least for the DMs that I played with, they didn't allow it. Um, so she was just kind of in my brain for a while. And then uh, I just was coming up with different ways that she wouldn't be your typical goblin, too. So, mm -hmm. you know, she's a creative type. She's a head empty, go for it kind of sense. Loves all the animals, so. Oh, all the animals. Uh, after the druid's heart, I think. <laughs> um, but yes, and that then there was one. Well, there's technically two. You go. Can't... No, you. No, no, you. You're you like a turn around, it? Robin and shit. No, you go. <laughs> nope, you go. I refuse. Go. <laughs> you refuse. Yep, go. Uh, you can't tell I me. I got... reversed Uno dude just now. <laughs> he did. He literally. That was the Uno reverse card. Everyone. Yeah, you can't tell um... me, dude. You're not the DM Knight is. You're not oh, my mom. Shit. You're not my real <laughs> mom. <laughs> You know, my anyway, real mom. Speaking no, of your dad. <laughs> um, but yeah, I had the great, I had, I, this was my first time making a monk and I had a concept for Lyra um, initially that I wanted to go with. I actually didn't end up, it's same, similar to Bookish's situation. She was concepted for a campaign and then um, it, she didn't end up getting used because for whatever reason it was like oh no this character won't work um and i en ended up being able to use her for this campaign uh the problem was i'd never built a monk before and rather than read what I, what i was supposed to do about monks uh i was like sure she's a monk she works out she's strong and i stacked her strength instead of her wisdom so i was a monk with no ac which is also a lot of fun. <laughs> so you stacked a monk like a barbarian. Living yes. on the edge. 
All right. I did. I was I was uh, an unintentional edge lord in building Lyra. Uh, how she didn't die, it, but how she didn't die in the in S one is still a mystery to me because she did take a lot of damage at some points. Lyra um, is so lucky that Bram has a sense of self preservation. <laughs> yes. And it's Zavina very, very true. got Lyra's back. So Zavina, yeah. I think, got some of the enemies off of Lyra's attention yes. for a bit. So they mm-hmm. went towards Zavina instead, but then they couldn't hit Zavina. So yeah. Because she's out. small. She's like, I will stab you in the knee. So going for them <laughs> calves. The calf stabber. Yes. The calf yes. stabber. But, um, yeah, the, you know, and the interesting thing about Lyra is I actually do enjoy playing intelligent or intelligent and charismatic characters and Lyra's kind of it's not that she's like she's like a a himbo or anything she's um just kind of very I guess the way that I would describe her as one pointed she doesn't really think in terms of the grand scope of things she's because I just watched it she lives her life a quarter mile at a time and that's kind of it's the first time that I've ever played a character that's like that usually I play characters that are a lot more uh longevity focused um, like they try to see the big picture, and this is the first character that I'm playing that kind of doesn't. So, it's a ride, <laughs> for sure. And now there is one, Roman, God, <laughs> with an eye. <laughs> God with an eye. Well, like Clive's like five years old now. In in game terms of like out of game terms, I should. Mm-hmm. He's 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 an old character, so I I really didn't like make him for this i just was i got it you know when i got accepted it was like you know i looked at the party composition i'm like yeah they need a clive so (laughs) i i brought him along that was that was it there was no other it didn't depth anything of this at all literally it was just like oh okay we got this 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 and this they need yeah they need somebody who's gonna keep them alive so i'll I'll play they need a cleric (laughs) yeah i hate sometimes i didn't mean like that though (laughs) i'm not an advocate for that i i actually like when i get new players to my table i don't i always tell them like play what you want not what the party needs Mm because you'll make it work you'll figure it out it'll be more but sometimes but like i I didn't but in this case i went against my own advice and it turned out to be you know he's a decent fit so far uh he's adopted a goblin already he's adopted a goblin yeah He's he's yeah. Clive has had some really good moments, I think, in season yeah. one. I'm really looking forward to what he brings to the table in season two. Um, but I, I, like, he's just such a, he's a character that seems, it's, see, even though it seems like you just kind of pulled him like, from a stock I'm gonna character. Mark this, I'm going to mark this down because you're going to regret what you just said. Hang on. Good. I hope I do. Make me regret it. I'm excited. Don't for threaten me with a good time. <laughs> he's going to bring in. Season two. This is Roman basically saying, <laughs> "I'm going to make him so one note." I hope you know who his god. <laughs> I hope you know who his patron deity is. So, oh, is it not the Lord. Raven Queen? It is. <laughs> <laughs> I feel. I'm just sitting here like, all right, bet. Let's go. Let's go. Let's bring it. Let's do this. That was literally the, uh, the reason why I was going to bring him. So. Nothing else. I've got, some, I've got some really fun things planned for all of you. It's Dang. going to be great. I've already, I've already discussed a couple things. <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> will, I definitely want to get into that night, but uh, that's a question for another time. So. All right. Well, you, cut me that's off a question for later just, tonight. I'm oh, sorry. It's just not, just let me promise. know when I should come in. Just I'll, I'll no, leave and come back. It's not that. Don't be that way, night. <laughs> we love you. Um, yeah, if only sure. you were in season one. <laughs> yeah, scoot closer to camera. We need to see your face. Yeah, I would have, I would have, I would have loved face. to play in season one. I would have loved to play in season yes. one. I'm Beautiful. not Bex. Oh. Speaking, <laughs> speaking of season one, uh, for what were some of your favorite moments from season one? <laughs> All the all the Moira quotes. Night, you've watched this. So you can weigh in. Live, if you have a moment yeah. that particularly Clive, I, I, I already weighed my part in, guys. I um, agree. <laughs> Bram it, it turning into shot a putting the, the goblin at the at the mulligan. Yes. Yes. Thermogoblin. Yes. Oh my god. There are a lot, a lot of There's... moments that yes. I loved. So my love so continues. Good. I also yes. really enjoy the spar between Cl- Clive and Lyra, and oh my god. like the pure rage you could see for Clive's response to Lyra, where he's like, <laughs> "And you should be more." 
what? Basically telling her to shut up and fight. Oh my god. <laughs> and the face, like, oh, just hold my ears. I'm coming for you. Lesson and two. Sabina to Moira, like, <laughs> hold this goblin. <laughs> yeah, hold the goblin. He still got one more Sabina. lesson to teach her, at least, yes. so. Yes, that's, oh. the, that's the funny part. Yeah, now, now they're as a master student relationship happening. Yeah. Um, yeah. One, I'm not gonna lie. My favorite, one of my favorite moments was, uh, I call it Clive's Captain America moment. <laughs> you know the scene like in Avengers where Captain America is facing off with Loki, and you have the little old dude that's like, there will always be men like you, um, and then Captain yeah. America shows up. It, it for it has it's not the same kind of a moment, but it has the same vibe as that moment uh, when Clive uh, looks basically looks at the the big bad and is like, send your vanguard, like. It, it was just, it was such a moment for me, you know. The other one is definitely um, Davina getting chucked at the goblin. That Make was this yeah. goblin fly. Yep. The, another funny one to me was Moira and the Mind Flare because of the absolute Ugh. ignorance of how deadly, like how narrow, how close the quick Moira came to kick. actually just dying. I was just <laughs> like, that, yeah, sure, flick it off like a cockroach. It's fine. <laughs> it's no, fine. No, we can't have any of this. Drop <laughs> kick. Like, basically, nope. drop kick. Just basically swatted it off of her ankle, just like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Not today. <laughs> not today. It was like, that thing was going to melt your insides. It's not a chest buster from Alien, but it's pretty oh. close. Um, <laughs> it's pretty so. close. I, there, there was one moment, uh, I think it was episode four. Um, where Bram is like, I want to turn into a raven. And there's a whole bunch of like ravens yes. like perched up. <laughs> and he, Bram's like, all right, I'm going to do a call. And so he lets out the raven call and it's dead silence, except for one crow in the back. They go, ah, ah. <laughs> That was fantastic. Just one, was just one singular crow. Yes. That in my head, one and I, in my head, like the, the response call ended with awkward. <laughs> yes. Awkward. Oh my God. Well, this is um, Stephen Awkward. Oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. There were, yeah. Um, I personally, if it's like just for, I loved getting to the point where I mean, you had that the Vanguard moment with Clive, and that all happened before they went into that uh, temple correct and then uh, yeah. it was a moment that followed immediately after that it's still my favorite moment for Moira and one of my favorite things that she's ever said um, the character had <laughs> left and uh, Clive <laughs> Moira was waiting for him to come in because he was just in the back mm -hmm. held up mm -hmm. and he's like a lot of people are gonna die <laughs> and her, oh. she said uh, live Death whispered, I'm coming. And yes. like, I was oh, like, that's, that's my favorite line. I was like, this fits so fucking good it. here. And then you have the green so to come up and it. ruin that moment by like, yeah. we're still going to fight them. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't no, a ruin at all. That was a no, that no, was a, an accomplishment. Like, that's the okay. formula we that it's supposed to happen at. You, it's yeah, it's perfect. perfect. We thought the goblin yeah. left. No. Yeah. No, the goblin's right at your feet. You just yeah. couldn't see her. There's like an intimate, there's like no, a, a very intense moment going on, and there's just like all of a sudden crunching sounds in the. Just, the yeah, like somebody eating Doritos <laughs> yeah. in the background. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm straight obsessed with that line. That was probably one of the most powerful lines in season one, I think. I um, loved it. And it was yes. like, it was probably, it, I think it was the first moment that like she really had a verbal conversation with Clive. So it was just like, <laughs> yeah. you got the vibe. It was like, you know, hashtag goth kids. And it was just like, okay, well that sets it. That sets the tone for, this yeah. is just how they talk now. So It's <laughs> like that moment where she talked into his head and he just goes, and he's like, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh my god, god the one. dogs and the bells are like, oh my god, that was yeah, also yeah. a really good line. I love that a lot. And mm -hmm. she's just saying it telepathically, he's like, what? Okay. I loved when we noped out of an encounter. Oh, yeah. We yeah. yeah. just We're snuck like, no. through an encounter. They were just like, no, we're not doing that today. Nah, -uh. no, we want to <laughs> we we gonna... live. <laughs> <laughs> we, had a, we, had a, we had a goal here, and the goal yeah. was not dying. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Those, and it's funny because a lot of people forget that you can, you don't actually have to um, have an encounter. You don't have you to fight everything. Yeah. 
it's like you can have a self, sense of self-preservation and you can just leave <laughs> you know <laughs> you can um, nope right out of there exactly exactly disengage oh yeah just leave uh but yeah so that'll lead me into the next question which is uh similar to other well-known franchises blood red bedlam season one explores what would happen in the wake of an apocalyptic event um, how did that affect the development of your characters? Like as you were setting them up and getting ready to sort of put them in this situation and how they interacted with like their world and their environment after the campaign started. I made him a glass blower because <laughs> it's the quintessential taking something, shattering it and rebuilding something more beautiful, more intricate. Ooh. Very cool. Well, I mean, Moira was built for, <laughs> to, I mean, oh, to deal with and work with dead shit. <laughs> dead <laughs> shit. Or stuff that was, like, I mean, stuff that was stuck. Um, and I guess, like, this, the environment that she was in um, obviously allowed her to, to do a lot with that. And that was by design. So, mm -hmm. I mean, she was in her element there. So I'm excited that... Um, but I mean, they were also sort of, they were in this separated place. So I'm excited now that they're out of it and she can fit more like contextually as not just like a spooky, <laughs> like were you just like spawned here as like <laughs> as this <laughs> creepy information giver? And it's like, oh, no, like there's, I like that she was made for it, but now she's got, she has more stuff that she can fit and she can sort of like become more three-dimensional outside of it because she's got history in this other place. So I'm excited for that too. But I mean, she was built for that sort of thing. So she was perfect for it. Uh, as Roman had pointed out, that would be funny. And like the more I thought about it, I'm like, that actually kind of makes sense because Sabina likes to put art everywhere because she's basically coping and trying to make things not seem as dark or dreary as they are. So she puts all this focus into her creations, like drawing silly faces on bricks. Her, Each of her boots have a face on them. Um, I didn't really get to figure out much about the world she had been involved with or anything prior. Um, just that one day she woke up with the missing mentor and not knowing where they went and being left in Casa de Corvo with nobody mm -hmm. but her pet mouse, Sniv, who's her best friend who's never left her side. Yeah. I kind of hope we get to see a little more of Sniv in season more two. Sniv. Yeah, it's yes. more Sniv. Sniv must live. Yeah. Must live. Sniv must live. But uh, yeah, it's interesting because when I built Lyra and it kind of similar to Moira, I think that actually this is kind of her, she's in her element in a post-apocalyptic situation, um, just by virtue of the way she perceives yeah. life, okay. you know, yeah. uh, just in general. She told um, Bram at one point that death doesn't bother her. And there's a very specific reason for that. And I think that being in a situation where you could die at any time, like fits right into that whole I live my life a quarter mile at a time mentality that she has, um, you know, and it affected how she interacts with others and how she interacts with the world around her too. But yeah, once again, then there was one. I, I don't, I don't know what to say. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Like Clive is, he's very accepting of everything, I guess. He's very just he's just very accepting of all of what's going on around him, whether it be a lot of death, a lot of joy, a lot of whatever. He doesn't really have an attachment to those types of things. He's too old. <laughs> he's He's too old for this shit. He's not tired of it. He just he's seen he's seen so much already, it's just kind of numb. He's just Can very you remind numb. our listeners how old he is. He's yes, four hundred and fourteen years old. <laughs> he's, he's very old, which that was probably one of my favorite moments. Actually, that bonding time that we had the only, right oh, yeah. before everything happened, that people were that you yes. were like, "How old are you?" And he, I was like, coming up on my four hundred fourteenth year, and everybody was like, yes. 
Jesus. <laughs> like, so, whoa, Grandpa. That's, that's like uh, Zabina. I made her 22 because we were in a dark campaign. I would have made her younger, but, you know, with the thought that um, death was imminent, like, there was a good chance the character would die, I figured probably shouldn't make her young <laughs> like but yes. that's why i play her as though she's got a young mentality so i half joke that she's 22 in human years human years mm. and yeah. that, that she's sense. not actually 22 she might not even yeah. know how old she is she might have Absolutely like not. very she's skewed like sense of time yeah she's like six <laughs> she's <laughs> a goblin well she, I, I, it looks like a uh, knight wants to weigh in here too so knight wants go up. for it knight I was just going to yeah. say that, uh, you know, and uh, Vixie and Roman particularly mm -hmm. will understand this, but you know who Clive reminds me a lot of, specifically with the too old for this shit attitude? Venus dad. Ooh. Oh, wait. No, wrong. Oh. Brun, Brun the bugbear. <laughs> yes! Hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't get it missed. No, I, I said uh, he's not too old for this shit. Oh, no. I, I said he's not like that at all. Please don't put that <laughs> on him. <laughs> At all. He does not have that, like, I just don't fucking eat it. I'm uh, too old. No, he does not have that mentality. He's just seen everything. He's just seen it all. Yeah. It all. And that's, and nothing surprises that. him. He's not like, I'm tired of this shit. He's like, this just doesn't surprise me. He's like, oh, me. yeah. People getting raided in a village getting completely massacred. Oh, that well. Happens. Like, <laughs> that happens a lot. Yeah. I think it's yeah. that, like, really traditional elvish demeanor. Like, the mm -hmm. one yeah. where they're very, like, you know, graceful in spite of everything. Like, yes. they're very, like, mild mannered and very tempered in the way that their approach is yes. to the world just because you know like everything going on around them is you know like leaves in a storm sort of there, deal. Yeah. Pass. that was there three thousand mm -hmm. years ago yeah i was there <laughs> like, like, was yeah, right. they get it yep, <laughs> so, yep. okay, okay. throw it into the fire I would so, say I would say Brune is that, except just on the opposite end of the spectrum. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I was just tired of seeing that same shit happen over yeah. and over. Yeah, yeah he's but he's no. he's an old old man or bugbear. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, he, I mean, the average bugbear, I think, if I remember correctly, lived to be uh, fifty or 50, sixty years yeah. old, and he was going on sixty six as when we were doing uh, yes. Oops All Paladins. So he was. He was yes. he was an old man, and uh, he, the only and reason he was still, even in that, yeah, still fucking kicked ass. Yeah, he's <laughs> Don't still kicked ass. You were the one that like took down the secondary VBEG, which is saying a lot because that guy was stacked. I planned it. It's okay. <laughs> you it's planned okay. it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it's the deck based paladin from the back. Um. Anyway. Uh. Anyway, so we're not here I to did want to bring that. That's a whole campaign. other campaign. But um. The next question, actually, Knight, you like same thing. It, it, it does extend to you, uh, so don't feel like you've been. I've been leaving you out. It's just we're trying to cover oh, trying to cover season one here. So I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I've got my beach gummies. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, so my question is, uh, how did you guys feel sitting down at the table for the first time, and how has that evolved until now? And Knight, for you, it's how are how are how do you feel about sitting down for the table to, at the table for the first time uh, in April? So. Nervously eats his gun. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you don't don't answer all once. You can let other people answer. Yeah. You can um, roll Roman under the bus. It's fine. It's fun to do that. Uh, so that def uh, bookish definitely just kind of hit that on the head. I'm really nervous uh, to sit down with. I mean, I I had the. Uh, fortunate circumstance of being able to <laughs> this kind of harkens back to the first question you asked which I actually didn't chime in on because you moved oh. on too quickly and I didn't want sorry. to sorry I didn't want to ruin your flow but it's all good you didn't want to be that uh, guy yeah uh, just like Roman I I auditioned essentially to be mm, here as true. the DM uh, you reached out to me saying hey um, we're looking for a new DM and would you be able to audition and just just see how things go and i was like yeah sure why not i've dm'd one time yeah let's see how it goes it's great. Be fine. Be great. <laughs> it's a great opportunity it's a great opportunity um, i know what dm stands for yeah oh, i know what no. it means direct uh, message right i've been yes. playing for six years i know exactly <laughs> yeah it'll um, be great <laughs> but i got the uh I got the wonderful chance to sit down with uh, Vixie, Lev, and Roman and have a one-shot with you guys, which I think you guys enjoyed. You told me you liked it. 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I loved every the... minute of it. I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> so what really, uh, if, you, if it's funny because I mentioned this to Levin Roman, what really got me was a specific situation uh, where you made a call and I was like, mm, that's what I'm looking for. That made me say that yeah. was what I was looking for. And it was the face thing. Yeah, I got to pull. Uh, it's a little, so. Like, Just because uh, both Lev and I, like, historically, Roman has a poker face in D&D. It's very hard to get him to react to anything. It's like winning the fucking lottery. Um, so, but, like, both, but the fact that both Lev and I had reactions to that moment, I was like, that's what I want. I want us to be so immersed that we, re like, we just naturally react. And mm -hmm. you did a great you job. Wanna know, you want to know how you uh, get Roman to react? You smooth out your hair, and then you pick up your blizzard to eat it. Yeah. <laughs> And then he and just dies, dies laughing. And, and he just dies, dies laughing. Yeah. It's just like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm here, guys. Blizzard. Oh, we got a cheers, you guys. Yeah, cheers. Cheers. Oh, more cheers. Violet Gate. We love you. Uh, but uh, we didn't stream the game. It was definitely one of those just fun between friends kind of thing. But the moment that she's referring to is that uh, there is a statue uh, in this little, this little square. Uh, and there was a series of unalivings uh that they were investigating and the statue had a face put on top of it and they were like oh no but uh no no uh it was a face it was a face of a friend that they had oh, made a flesh face uh, well, a flesh yeah, face a flesh it was a flesh face, face. Like, yeah a flesh very a flesh face, face. Mm -hmm. uh yes um how it was a clarice moment it was the <laughs> it was um, definitely a clarice moment Dwight, yeah. or Dwight, Dwight, in the Dwight from the art class. Yeah, the, <laughs> yeah, it was yeah, one of those mimicking. moments. Uh, and Vixie was like, "I'm going to go and take this off because it doesn't need to be here." And as she reaches up to grab it, she, uh, uh, she jokes about, uh, "What if this thing looks at me?" And I was like, "Well, you know, uh, you well, look into its she eyes." She made her face it, at it. She gave it a disapproving. Oh, that's right. Gave yeah, it a disapproving look. A, you, she, she made a disapproving look at the statue. The statue made a disapproving look at her. And then, uh, <laughs> what? Oh! <laughs> and, then, and that was yeah. the moment. That, that was when we rolled initiative. And that was when I was like, I'm sold. Yep. Uh, it was and a lot Moira of fun. wasn't even there. <laughs> <laughs> but I was so reactive. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, it was, it was really cool to just sit down with these guys. Um, and then they asked me to be the DM for this. And I've been working on things. I've got a lot of cool things planned. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what questions Vixie has, so I won't go into a tirade of stuff <laughs> at this moment. <laughs> I've it's joked about them saying that, I want to talk about this with people so badly, but I can't because the only people I can talk to are you guys and you can't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> don't give away spoilers. Like, don't yeah, worry, you'll be hot God, that, that, that side of the room for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, it's true. It's a lot of fun. Uh, but yes, and so that's uh, that's how night mm -hmm. felt coming to the table for the first time. How about everybody else? Excited always. Yeah, that I mean, I'm I'm always excited. eager to just start a game, um, mm -hmm. you know, and get closer to a character. So. What about you, Ron? Um, I, I don't know. I've done this a lot, so like it wasn't it wasn't uh, it wasn't like awkward or anything. Uh, it was really fun getting to know each individual person in their play style, because uh, all y'all are weird. Um, <laughs> every Our one of you, weird. every one of you is weird. Uh, it, it was a little it, it was a little <laughs> different because obviously you guys all know each other you've played mm -hmm. together before pretty much right. you know you have this like sense of camaraderie with each other so mm -hmm. yeah, of course you, you when you get to that table uh you do feel like you're the not the black sheep but more the, uh, the new just guy the, the new yeah the fng is the white we call sheep it. and a black yeah the, the fucking new guy uh, <laughs> yeah exactly so but it was all right i played a very i mean i i played a quiet character that was very observant so i just listened and watched and waited and bided my time and only spoke when i felt like it was right and it kind of fit that mood it was like i don't need to talk because you guys are kind of taking the reins you have that flow and ebb with each other mm -hmm. uh and now it's uh i mean now now i can you know throw you guys in the garbage can and you won't get mad over it so. <laughs> well it was actually it was my first time playing with everybody except vix yeah. that's right mm -hmm. that's right 
I, I, yeah, I was like, it, it was, I wasn't playing a very quiet character. No. <laughs> <laughs> Bram is not quiet. Yes, Bram is, no, Bram, has oh, Bram. Bram is a lovable yeah. caretaker of uh, making sure we have our snacks, our drinks. You know, he we is, got everything we need for this trip. Bram is the mom friend. <laughs> yes, Bram is 100% the mom friend. <laughs> the moment when Bram was like, Clive, eat. You'll feel better. <laughs> Just trying to get Clive yeah. to eat a sandwich, and Clive's like, no, I'm not. And hungry. then it became a group I'm effort that the brooding. whole group was like, please, God, eat something. <laughs> like, Damn it, man. And then he had to explain why. Was it was going through the fields, all right? <laughs> she was trying to protect Sniv, telling Sniv to stay behind so he didn't die, and she wasn't hungry. Like, yeah. Yeah, but it's it's interesting to see the table, um, to watch the table gel from like episode one up until the end of S one, um, and to see where they go from here for sure. So, oh, okay. Some bonding. <laughs> oh yeah, more bonding because I definitely feel like we uh, are going to have more opportunities to role play and really explore uh, the bonds that have begun to form between the characters. You know. Um, that's, that's, that's something I really hope to do with this campaign mm -hmm. is bring a whole bunch of let you guys be able to role play more often because uh, I know you guys didn't get a chance to do that in the last campaign very much um, and that's something I really want to do is take kind of a step back and uh, let you guys kind of have the reins as far as narrative and storytelling it'll be, I, it'll be interesting to see how all that ends up working out um, speaking of we uh, had a team name <laughs> Uh, during season one, we were the intrepid red badgers. Uh, do you guys think that uh, the crew will keep that team that team name, or do you think we're gonna change it for season two? I'm we switching it. We will be changing this <laughs> yeah. name. Like, probably was already like, no, yeah. get rid of that thing. I don't want it. I don't want it. Anything about this this experience that happened? Um, See. Clive Don't worry, has, it's being all make Clive has an impeccable memory for things, and he holds on to bad memories just as much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bad memory that he doesn't want anymore. <laughs> it's like, let's not make call ourselves the Red fine. Badgers, please. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. We need a new name. We we do it. Just... Can we can we be the team the spotted chicken team? No. Oh my god. <laughs> we know that team dies first. They died. They died. Sure they, they, did die. they did. They got massacred. <laughs> oh god. That's that like kind of thing. Thing. Um, straight off of a fantasy name generator. Like <laughs> Thank you, Emily. We should yeah. just we should we, just use Emily's expertise. We were just uh we were just talking on with, with my group about like weird names that come off of the generators and one of them we saw was like Coyote Coyote. We were like, what in the <laughs> hell is this? Like, no, no. We are Team Moon Moon. 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 So many. I'm a circle of the moon druid. That would be <laughs> Bram's vote is, is Team Moon Moon. Oh god, Team, Team Moon Moon. 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 Oh my god. I've seen like, Writes so down many notes. random generated ones. Like what like but none of them have ever fit a group I've been in. Like Silent mm. Legion never works because most of the people I was in groups with prior were way too loud. Oh god. <laughs> Way too loud of a group to ever be called the Silent Legion. But there's an irony in that that I find hilarious. <laughs> yes, exactly. We're out of the Silent Legion. We all wear plate mail and are paladins. <laughs> yeah, so, you heard us coming from three miles away. <laughs> I have to fill you in on what's going on in the chat, though, because I do think um, Akita86 says they love the RP, um, and Jay, uh, aka Violet Gamer, has uh, said that the RP is the favorite part of the game for them. Uh, and of course, Disso has uh, said that Badgers will flip their, you know what, inside out and stink up the place. It's a great team name. Yeah. He votes yes. Yeah. The of rest course, of us are like, no. Of course. It, <laughs> instead, we're, we're team, we I make the fucking what, whooshing no. noises. I don't know what. You're going to have to be more specific. What is it that they turn inside out and stink up? <laughs> Uh, I believe anus. it got anus. censored by Twitch, so I don't think I can repeat it on Twitch. I, I just said it. It didn't it's a piece of anatomy. What are they going to do? <laughs> if you we're allowed what? to say fuck shit, damn it, and you have him laughing in the butthole. background that you can hear. Um, you can't say butthole. <laughs> you oh my god. Team. Jeez. Team DM. Period. That's, so we're not calling ourselves that. It's fine. <laughs> this is dying. Right. I I will Please have to say uh, as as a DM as a DM note, 
Um, there is something, and this is open knowledge, uh, there are adventure guilds in the world that I'm building. Uh, so if you guys end up joining a guild of some kind, you do get the chance of renaming yourselves. Yay! So this is something okay, that you guys will have the option. Incentive. <laughs> incentive. You've just given us incentive. This, I'm, it's, not an incentive. it's not an incentive. Yay! This is just me stating this is just me stating that it is an option if you guys wanted to write down on your little team cards, the Blood Redgers or something else entirely. Yeah. It is no. it is available to you. Also, to I point out in chat, I have to point out that Nightlight 95 says, man, that night is sexy. Heart, heart. Uh, Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <Night>. <laughs> she Clearly, that, that Nightlight 95 that has one. never seen that Night play so Elden Ring and get ago. super spicy. My guy. <laughs> oh, so I think he knows. Ago. I think he knows. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. All righty. So, <laughs> yeah. Moving just on. Kind of just, just stopped laughing in the background. Oh, God. So, oh, no. <laughs> So, would you be willing to ever sit down at a physical table instead of a virtual one? Hell yeah. Whatever yes, was but who can afford flight? I know. One day, though. One day. Maybe we can to. kickstart our, our own live game. Let's that's, that's crowdfund for a live game. Crowdfund! That's what I, I, yeah. Some about. of the stuff I've seen on Kickstarter. Meet up halfway, <laughs> even there, or wherever we can do it. I mean, yeah. we were, I think we talked about it a while ago that we were, we were yes, like, we did. it'd be probably easier for us to go to to i think to where bookish and them are i think that was the, just the best Actually, when we first it out room. i think we said it was easier for people to come to the west coast yeah but didn't we i think we also looked, i think we also looked into over there for the because it's cheaper to like stay over there than it is in california or something like that yeah i can't it's remember what we were looking at weird pricing but yeah, yeah. 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 Really long story Airbnb. short we want to i think yeah. the consensus is that we want to do a live game it'd be really yeah. fun but oh, we yeah. would have to crowdfund for it oh man i, I oh, am a very I'm a very huggy person, so I would very much love to get the chance to meet you guys and give you a big hug. Yes. Big old group hug. Just oh my so god, hug, yes. Just so, just so especially, hug. especially Roman. I mean, just, have you seen him? Only hug <laughs> <with his friends. laughs> <laughs> consensual hug. Yo, my husband's in the chat right Consent now. Knock it off. Consensual <laughs> <laughs> hug. Can't be hey, Carter, let's go. Jay's ready. Jay's ready. Jay will throw money at us. Chat. Where is this? All right, let's get the questions going. Anyways, yeah, so <laughs> let's, not, let's not get uncomfortable. We all know we want to hug each other. We're all friends here. It's fine. So let, let's not make it weird. Let's not make it that family guy brand of weirdness. No, no. Uh, we're <laughs> already making it weird. God. <laughs> we were talking about badgers earlier, so questions. Uh, hugs yeah, are allowed. Butt. Akita has There's approved. Some. There we go. Great. Fabulous. Um, <laughs> Badger butts, badger butts. Okay, badger butts. so now we're going to get into so, a couple of general D&D questions just to get kind of get familiar with how we all play D&D. &D. Um, do you guys have any favorite homebrew rules when playing D&D? &D? Yeah, uh, I do. Um, this one's actually gained popularity very quickly. Uh, it's the it's the um, uh, the roll or no um, potion rule, which is... Woo! you so you usually you do um a bonus action to drink it yourself a uh an action to drink it yourself and uh, you don't roll you just take the max amount of points that the potion gives you or it's an action to give it to somebody else uh, and i like that it gives the players like an incentive of your if you're going to burn your whole action you're going to get the max healing you get because i think about it like right. your turn's only six seconds worth of con worth of combat right if you right slam a shot as fast as you physically can, you're probably going to spill it. Mm -hmm. If you don't and you take the six seconds to do it, you're probably going to get every last drop. So that's that's the way I look at it. I like that rule. I, like that. I think I think it gives incentive. Good rule. And it gives players... As long as, it's, as long as it's not carbonated, I can slam back a drink like... Right. Before. Yeah. So I think six seconds. And so it right. makes sense in reality as well. So. Right. So I like, I like that rule. I think it's... I think it's just helpful on both ends, but hey, if you can do it, the enemy can do it too. So yeah, that's that's a good point. Um, one of my I... favorites is ooh, uh, for it. sorry, Bex. No, one of my favorites is actually um, a homebrew rule that we have at a few of our tables, uh, Bookish and Love know, uh, regarding the lucky feet. Um... So, and I talked about this on our Instagram too. Uh, so the way that we. No one actually gets to take the lucky feet unless uh, they roll a natural 20 in we'll front of that. the DM. 
on the first roll in like their that first initial like character meetup. Um, it's a little bit of a weird rule that we have. It's just like this fun thing that we do. And I mean, obviously, if someone really, really desperately needs yeah. the lucky feet, and like no one's gonna it, tell them no. This mm -hmm. is in the games where our DM, like before, like we're even level four, sometimes let us start with the feet automatically. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. because, you know, if you're a human, generally you start with one, so they just made it so everyone had it, and so if you wanted that lucky feat, you had to roll the nat 20 for that, yeah. that one. Okay. Um, it's just kind of a preventative yeah. to, like, give, to make to it make more from... sense why, yeah. why that's the homebrew thing there. Yeah. I, I say then when the, we all hit level contact. 8, we all take the lucky feet. What are you going to do? Tell us now? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right. Look. Hey. hey what? You made a. You made a very accurate statement. If you guys, the players, can do it. So can the. Enemies. Hell yeah, man! Oh I, god. I, I do the same Always. thing. Anyway. So, so you know you, what? I feel like you, you guys, get more of a creation bard with the mode of possibility. <laughs> if you guys want to multi-class into something without like hitting requirement feet, which honestly requirements I can work with, it's fine. But uh, just remember that if there's a dragon that suddenly can cast, I don't know, warlock spells, or just uh, we did that to uh, ourselves, and, and an Uiblex for some reason that's able to cast hold person. <laughs> there you go. Just I do think that's, a, that's just wanted to weigh up. in as well. <laughs> just, so uh, I, I do, I do have a homebrew rule that I did not come ooh. up with. One of my favorite DMs on the planet, Misha Stanton, came Yay, up with Misha, this, and I we think love that Misha. they are a genius. Yes, they um, are. 100%. They call it mid vantage. Oh, it's what, it's what happens when you have uh, imposed disadvantage, and you also have advantage. You get mid vantage, so you roll three times. You roll the highest, and you take the highest, and you take the lowest, and you knock them out, and you take the one that you rolled that's in between those two. And so instead of them just canceling each other out, it becomes a whole new thing called mid vantage, and I really like it. It's a lot of fun. Let me open up my notes here. It's a great <laughs> one. Advantage. It is a great so, rule. It is a lot of fun. It's a, it falls into that failing forward sort of category. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's like, it's it's so much more fun to roll dice than to yes. not roll dice. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. I have one that I like. We haven't ever had it in a game that I've played. It's just been in a game that I've listened to before, where um, when you roll a natural one, Sometimes the DM will roll a percentage die to see how bad that flop was. So Ooh. if the lower the number, the least consequences that's going to happen. But like uh, an roll example roll. is um, the the venture in group. Uh, one of the enemies had rolled a natural one and ended up cutting the hair of one of their teammates who is very proud of his hair. No! <laughs> and he was very very upset but it was one of the characters that just makes noises like mm, yeah, oh, yeah. Mm, yeah. <laughs> and he was just very distraught because the teammate like didn't like rolled well and like the fail wasn't so drastic that he hit the teammate and said just slice some of the hair off. <laughs> god <sighs> and i just find it interesting because it adds a bit of flavor to those natural yeah. ones you know mm -hmm. um but yeah, I haven't ever had a table where it's done that, but it just, I find it interesting. That's a cool one. Yeah. My, my favorite homebrew rule, and this is something I discussed with you guys in our session zero, uh, that I will be implementing, uh, is, is something combat because, uh, I felt the negative effects of this. I felt the positive effects of this and everybody loves it. It's criticals, uh, in combat, when you roll a natural 20 to hit an enemy, it is a critical hit. And normally, the way people do that, they either double the damage, so they roll uh, their basic die. So if you wield a great sword, you would roll your 2d6, take that total, double it, then add your modifiers. Or they would uh, double the dice. So once again, great sword, 2d6, you would end up rolling 4d6 plus your modifiers. Uh, the way I'm going to be doing them is I'm going to take essentially two dice, two sets of dice. Uh, so the great sword, you would end up rolling uh, just those 2d6 and then adding a max damage as if you rolled it. So if I rolled 2d6 
and I rolled an eight. I would then add 12 because the max damage on a 2d6 is 12, making that 20 plus modifiers. Uh, mm. I think I think it makes the game, especially combat, a little bit more fun because all of us have been in a situation where you're like, yes, a critical hit. I rolled a one for damage and it doesn't yeah. feel good because you feel like it, even though it's a crit, it's almost wasted. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't feel good whenever you roll a crit and then just roll low on damage it feels great when you roll a crit and do high damage so i think this is a good way to mediate um that feeling and those rolls what are you talking about we played DD. i like punishing myself <laughs> not all of us can be <laughs> masochist. i do that with masochist. my stats it's fine yeah, 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 yeah. oh my god <coughs> so what's your favorite home to roll uh, what what <laughs> Huh? Was um, this about stats? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I've honestly played less than everybody else here. I haven't really run into a lot of homebrew rules. I also haven't like watched a lot of things that would enlighten me to some. I mean, I've heard some that you guys have already touched on. Homebrew stuff, I really like. I like stuff that focuses more on like character flavoring, things that you discuss with the DM that make it you know, uh, sort of a unique play experience for you and allows the world to be fleshed out a little bit differently. Like the thing with, uh, the thing that Moira can do, it, it's not it's not part of the College of Spirits bar anywhere mm -hmm. in it. Um, but you know, she's got the, the tactile like touch thing where she can like draw shit from people. And that was just from my interpretation of like what spirits and memories are and it's a it's completely flavored. There's absolutely no um, like number advantage or you know mechanical advantage to having it. But I like that I'm able to do it. So when characters introduce things like that and homebrew player individual things, those that's the stuff that interests me because people come up with really interesting shit. And as long as it doesn't you know become OP or break the world that they're in. Um, <laughs> and, you know, just it's not used as like a method of spotlighting for absolutely no reason. Like, it's really right. interesting to see what people can come up with because it can end up sort of changing. The, the more you use it and the more you get comfortable with things like that, it can really end up altering other bigger pieces of the picture of the world that they're in. And you can just end up creating really cool things that way. So I like character related shit more so than like battle related stuff. I, like, I remember uh, Go ahead. the uh, <laughs> the um, thing that I had you do with my character because she has certain fears to roll a percentile mm -hmm. to die to see whether or not she can like s steal herself <laughs> against it or if she completely freezes up because of that panic. I just really like having those things. I also did that with a character named Andipe. Um, mm -hmm. I would roll a percentile die a to see if she got distracted by the smell of food. <laughs> and if she did, then, like, because there was, we did a one shot, like a scrimmage match, and there was a room mm -hmm. with a, t a plate, a uh, table full of food, and she literally spent several rounds just shoveling food in her face because the smell of food distracted her enough that it took two rounds before she could actually are there certain play. foods that give her disadvantage she mm. is a um so her full name's anda de, anda pay de rash tay panda day trash she's a, she's a raccoon <laughs> loves food yeah. and i love, trash I love good it. god um, <laughs> she was That's a jada amazing. chain monk who if she ate she literally stripped down her clothes which is how she lost her first set of clothes and ended up in a baby oh. onesie mm -hmm. because the place that they were on got like infested with these Icarus kind of creatures and they had to get off the ship as fast as possible, which meant she left her clothes behind being carried by another player's character. <laughs> and so she huh. found a onesie to replace her, her clothes, but she, yeah, she thought that was how she'd stay clean is Remove clothes okay. can't get dirty, even if she's crawling into a trash can. Makes sense. But and, <laughs> and on that <laughs> note, I do have to say, uh, we have. It is time for us to take a quick ten-minute break, and then we'll be back with a few more questions in our Q and A.
Uh, so if you guys uh, go ahead and grab a drink, grab a snack uh, in the break time, and we'll see you in about 10 minutes. No. Well, that depends on uh, our tech person. <laughs> <laughs> we just sit here and smile awkwardly. <laughs> We could ramble on about like you know D and D characters that we've made, uh, but you know.
Oh god. So anyways, yeah, that's what I think that. Oh my god! <laughs> and welcome back everyone. Please disregard anything you may have heard before I said welcome back. I hope you got your uh, I hope you got your drinks and your snacks and you're ready to go for the second half of the Blood Red Bedlam QA uh, and season two. Uh, teaser, if you will, because uh, we are going to be talking the second half. We're going to get started talking a little bit about what's coming for season two, uh, as well as, you know, answering a few more questions. Uh, so, yeah. So the next question for y'all, and uh, now that we're getting back here, getting settled in, is what do you think is the hardest thing about playing a streamed virtual, like a streamed game? Essentially, you're playing a virtual game, but just live for our you know, people. Oh, lag. <laughs> we just got back and Hobbit cheered us. Oh, cheers! Cheers. cheers. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, cheers. Time. Any, yeah, time. And time. Anytime there's lag, it um, can sometimes mess with the flow, as we know. Um, mm -hmm. Hopefully, we'll have less of that now that we've done this a bit that. more. Yeah, knock on wood. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, My tables would do. If I just went straight on uh, what the hardest thing for me as a player is, is mm -hmm. not picking up other people's freaking accents. Hmm. Good point. Look, <laughs> I'm so glad that Lyra and Bram have the same accent because no, every time I talk to Clive, up. I'm like, oh, yeah. Slavic. So, we go back to Slavic. We do not copy, yes. we go back to Slavic. Yes. 100%. Uh, yeah. I do the same thing. I lean on Bram. I'm like, remember Bram. Listen to Bram. <laughs> Mine is just tech issues in general, because mm. that, that's a stigma that follows me wherever I go. It's just whether it be my stream, whether it be TikTok, whether it be just anything, is that I am very technology technologically illiterate. Uh, yeah. it's, it's fantastic. My, my version of maintenance is percussive maintenance. Uh, ah. I hit I hit it a few times and hope it works after. That's about <laughs> it. <laughs> um, I I pick up on uh, visual cues from people's faces uh, to determine like how I actually respond or whether I should continue with something. So, and the ones that I pay attention to the most tend to be the silent ones. But when you're jumping between screens and you're going from like the virtual tabletop to uh, back to like the video ninja or whatever you're using where you can see everybody's face it's it's hard to catch all of them um mm. so i know that i know that if i read it i'm i know that i'm reactive so it's it would be easy for me for everybody to see exactly what i'm thinking at a table and i would be able to see everybody's face much more easy that way so i that's the difficult part for me was one episode you, of, yeah oh, sorry no, go ahead. I'm just, it's just me rambling. You, you well, there was just me. that one episode of season one where our video cut out on Video Ninja, and I couldn't oh, yeah. focus. Mm -hmm, I, mm -hmm. I, I, I lost all ability to follow along with the game because I, I couldn't see your faces, even yep. the minimum that we can see. I was gone. Yep. It was, yeah, because we were having a lot of lag to... that day. And mm -hmm. They were trying to fix it. And that was the only way that they could think of. But then, you know, like you said, then we couldn't see each other unless we were mm -hmm. looking at the Twitch stream. And that's Switch kind of delay. difficult. And, mm -hmm. then, and that was lagging so much. Yeah. I think at that point, if we ever get to that situation ever again, where it's becoming such a problem that we can't, like, do anything, it's a bit better just to be like, hey, we're just going to stop. <laughs> and just we'll just be like up and out I, 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 I know Holy the episode that, that that they're talking yeah. about, and yes, I would much same. rather just call, pull the plug and be like, "Hey, we'll be back," than than go through all that frustration because oh. man, we were all upset by the end of the game. Yes, that was that mm -hmm. was like in the very beginning too. Like we were just figuring mm -hmm. out how to run everything. And we so. were just little that was in one of the first three <laughs> episodes, I think. So probably not yes. not available to see again on YouTube because no. there's yes. so many problems. There, there are so many. There yeah. are there are certain episodes that have been locked in the vault for reasons. Yeah, hashtag blessings. Um, <laughs> it's, okay. it's, it's part of the learning process is getting things yes. wrong. It was the yep. day that we were chipmunks for our viewers. It's fine. Oh yeah. We've grown. <laughs> Oh my god. Um, yeah, I think that's probably technolo technological issues are probably one of the hardest parts of uh, 
the streaming of streaming a live game, you know, because the tape it relies so much on being able to see each other and react to each other, and picking up on those nonverbal cues of knowing when to talk and when not to talk, you know, like um, so it, it is difficult. But if you can if you can get it down, wow, like you know, it's so yeah. And I think initially like there was there is a learning curve when you're just starting to do this as well. <laughs> so. Um, for sure. But let's see. Oh, ooh, yes. The next one is directed at our uh, dice goblins at the table. Um, I have so, glam dice. I want to use those. That was my question. Do you have any physical dice for these characters, or is oh. there a set that you've seen that reminds you of them? You are so ready. You're on it, Bex. I, I do. <laughs> I have. I have a. I have a prismatic dice. I have a prismatic d twenty. That is is my brand dice, and then. Vix gave me some to fill in the collection to have like the to have a very like stained glass feeling set of physical mm -hmm. dice for Bram. <laughs> I love them. So, so ignore the the brand name on this because yeah, I'm just using this for a reason. But in this bag uh, yeah. contains every single character dice that I've used in a campaign. Uh, there are these black and red ones that I use for a character named Sam. Uh, he was my my little tiefling warlock boy. I love Sam. There are a translucent green uh, set that was for Skarnag, my lizard folk. There is a sparkly set of unicorn dice uh, <laughs> for for my very very queer little bard friend. Uh, I loved him. He was great and cute and adorable. Uh, his name uh, his name was Bradley. God, Bradley. Oh, I, I love Bradley. He was adorable. He was a uh, he was a uh, um, a gnome. Not a. I kept wanting to say Hobbit, but he's not. A, he's not Hobbit. He was a gnome. He was great. Uh, and if I'd, I'd have to, oh yeah, Hawkeye. Hawkeye is a uh, set of blue. Uh, op uh, it's like blue and silver, but you can't see through it. Ah, opaque. Gotcha. Opaque is worth. Uh, blue and silver. He was blind. Uh, he was blind in both eyes and was a blood hunter. He was he was really cool. So I love having thematically set dice. Sure, for sure, I do too. Um, I actually I'm looking for a set for Lyra. There's a set that I've seen that I really love. Um, it's a deep purple set. I forgot which dice maker makes them. I saw them on Instagram, um, but she's very because her colors are all purples and stuff. I'm looking for a set of purple dice. Uh, that sort of, bit, but like dark purple because she's a bit of an intense character. Um, so, but so I don't have any specific dice that I use for her, but I do have dice for one of my favorite characters. It's actually going to be coming back soon. I'm so excited. Um, her name is Oriana. She is a knowledge cleric, and Ooh. I'm obsessed with her. Uh, and Bookish, knowing that I'm obsessed with her, got me this for one of my birthdays because ah! she's so cute. Um, and the and dice that I had, catapult. I actually <laughs> yes, a little catapult too. But uh, because she's a knowledge cleric, it fits. She loves books. Um, and the mm. dice that are in here are a custom set that were made for me by a friend of mine, Ruit Deer, on Instagram. And they're, I love them because they're basically colors that represent her and. Since her spiritual weapon is a feather, I don't know if you can really see it on here. There's a the camera. Uh, uh, the, the one is a feather, opposite direction, towards you guys. So that's amazing. And, yep, and uh, Rude even went as far as to put little lines in there from things that she says, like when she casts Revivify, her thing is she says your story doesn't end here, and those words are actually inside of the die. Um, and when she casts spells, she sometimes says, Tenegrave, I have need of you for character reasons. And that's actually inside of the dice as well. So that's probably like my one, that's that's like my die that I like. Those are the special die, the special die, you know? Um, but I love them. So, and I have plenty more dice for other characters. Uh, my other favorite set is for uh, Najma, my <laughs> Circle of Stars druid. They're really popular right now. And I was like, man, I was doing it before it was cool. Um, but uh, they're they're purple and sparkly. They're purple and clear. It's interesting because it's like a the bottom part is purple and the top part is clear, and there's like gold speckles on them. And I I love those dice too. So I, uh, my friend for my birthday gave me um, dragon scale dice set. What? And I'm I'm still building the character that those are going to be used for. Those <laughs> because, like, sound cool, right? 
I got them as a gift and I'm like, okay, I need to build the character that goes with these because <laughs> they're so beautiful. So I'm gonna go with a Dragonborn Paladin, I think. Is the other yes, fantastic. Fellow Dragonborn, yay. <laughs> but anyway. Um, I don't collect dice. <laughs> no. Get out. Get I out. don't. Dice goblins um, in the room are just like offended. <laughs> yeah. I, I, the only <laughs> dice I, I'm, I've, I've also never really played any physical, like, at table games. So all of my dice have been virtual. And I just, I have a hard time parting with money for stuff like that. I can't. It's, it's really hard. It has to be, it has to really call to me. The only dice that I have have been gifted to me. Um, and the one, and it's a set of, uh, they're kind of like goldish metal. Vixie gave them to me, and they're if they apply to anybody, it's to my character Go, um, who is a, <laughs> a warforged character. Um, yeah, I don't. <laughs> if I had to imagine, did you make C three PO? I did not. Um, <laughs> he's. I'm not. I'm gonna get wrapped up in him. I'm not gonna talk about him. <laughs> I'm not gonna talk about him. We'll fall in love with him um, over again. <laughs> If I had to imagine a pair of dice or like a set of dice for Moira, it would have to be a, a set of dice that has the um, the liquid centers Support. to them, mm -hmm. um, that where the inside moves. So, and it, it would have to be something relatively clear or transparent that you could see through. And the inside would be sort of like the she when her when she's using her thing or her ability to any degree like first if it gets intense for whatever reason her eyes which are milky already so the inside would be milky interior also but they're it's green um very typical fucking uh fucking danny phantom ghost colors um so it's, it's I, that was, I was of... honestly thinking of the reliquary from anastasia and i'm not yes a... yes it's all it's that very typical cliche spooky green um, i was thinking of eris morn from destiny yeah <laughs> they get like that so it would be that sort of color and they would have to be glow in the dark nice Yes, hundred percent. All right. So for everybody who wants to gift dice to uh, lovable, <laughs> lovable Lev, make sure you ship it to her address at one two six now. Oh my Lev. goodness! <laughs> and Just this is how completely we completely dox. Completely dox. Oh god! Please don't. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Roman only plays with virtual dice, right? No, I have nineteen sets of metal dice. Oh. Yeah. I forgot about those. Yeah, that's, <laughs> not, that's not even my resin dice that I have. I think I have like over twenty something sets of resin dice, but those are I don't, just the metal. Yeah, well, I, I have dice. <laughs> I have literally dice for Fireball. Oh mm -hmm. my god, that's amazing! Oh, are those like, are literally those the... dice for oh, no. Fireball? And there's, my only there's, metal there's dice that I have, I used to like suck the toxicity out of my other dice. So I'm just <laughs> storing, I'm storing all the toxicity oh, in um, my metal dice, yes. and I'm just gonna lend them out to people I don't like. I, I do oh, not have ahead. dice for a character. I've never built a character with dice. None of that. It's just, mm -hmm. I like my clicky clacks. I do. I like the shiny clicky clack rocks, but I stopped yes. collecting them because A, it was a habit and I really Money. needed to get out of it. Yes, it was expensive. That's especially when the dice. Says you were an addict, yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, especially when I when I was buying sets that were like, okay, so I have a, I have a, I have a dice set that's like two hundred eighty dollars. Okay, so it's just like, that's like, a lot of money for dice. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> it's really expensive. Uh, and then after that, I was like, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. <laughs> I have enough dice. I have enough dice, and so my wife it. fully cut me off. <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's I think that's a wise decision. This it's is coming from a guy. This is coming from a guy who used to play Warhammer 40k. Like yeah. I, I know what expensive is. So yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think. Lucas, are you looking for your dice for Zavina? <laughs> I don't have a set for her. I really like oh. some painter ones. I do have a lot of dice, but my favorite Ooh. dice, if I can get it to show, has little dinosaurs. Ooh. Oh, oh my yeah. god, dino dice, look how cute! And this is my they are. real This is my favorite I can't eh. I see it. I saw the dinosaur at first, a little little brontosaurus on there. They're, they're I love dinosaurs, dinosaurs, okay? And so I saw this at a, a game store. Um and I had I had I had to have it. I also have <laughs> one that has the Egyptian Ankh on it and everything. Ooh. 
Oh, nice. I just I, remembered I have a I have a D three hiding somewhere. I've got I've got. I bought that the the Laura Bailey bag. <laughs> for Laura home. Bailey yeah. bag. <laughs> um, I have sectioned. So each pocket has a specific number set, so I don't have to guess where are my D sixes. I just go into my pouch and there they are. Oh, super uh, organized. I love it. Also, this nightlight <laughs> guy says they're dinosaurs. Uh -huh. Diabolical, man. Do we ban that <laughs> nightlight guy from the chat? Yeah, that nightlight guy is a little weird. <laughs> he is, man. Yeah, let's, let's kick okay, him out. He's, he's so stupid. <laughs> oh, oh, he's so terrible stupid. terrible jokes. <laughs> this uh, one is probably one yeah. of my favorites. He's got to be a real DM. It's weird. Oh, that's and then I also have down. one that has blues and golds and kind Ooh. of like purplies. We love that. It's a good thing my my skin is so bright in this light that it makes the <laughs> dice pop, you know? You know, you can see the colors. It's, oh, I'm just man. too pale, okay? I'm so sorry. We're all, we're all dice goblins in our own special way, I think. I, 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 what I message was deleted? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? No! <laughs> all of his messages Hobbit. were deleted. Why are oh, we Hobbit, man, Hobbit, Hobbit, what? <laughs> Hobbit's trolling you. Wow. <laughs> you took the metal back to your head. Wow. We, we, we need one of those uh, virtual Please hands God. so we can give light some I see how it is. Oh, oh so my God. God. <laughs> I'm just here to soak through my mic because my mic is like horrified. I'm as a DM and what? I'm already getting bullied. <laughs> Well, we're already actually, passing off the blame on the poor nice little hobbit. Into the next question, yeah. believe it or not, what do you guys value about the DRV table specifically? Like, what is it? What is it that makes you happy to play here? You know, assuming you're happy to play here, and now like just faking it till you make it. <laughs> uh, I missed the question. <laughs> <laughs> Of what I'm do you sorry, value the, the BRB at the BRB table? Huh? <laughs> about what do you value about the BRB table? Like what makes you enjoy coming to play here, you know, and the, streaming the, the game? People. Yeah, you guys. I <laughs> enjoy playing with <laughs> everybody at this table. You all crack me up. You mm -hmm. have great moments. Mm -hmm. Some people say great words that <laughs> I just love and I tell them that they're cool. <laughs> Some people are gonna punch things in the face, and I say, I got your back, we're gonna kick their ass kind of moments. <laughs> Another, I want to teach me to do glass blowing, which I got the okay for. And yeah. then I've got the one that puts me on their shoulders and I can't see above the table. <laughs> I think actually that we've uh, built, we have a unique table in the sense that um, or not, not necessarily unique, but I think we have a rare treasure in the sense that the table, this is one of the most supportive tables I've ever been a part of. We're always very quick to like help each other and clarify rules and things like that um, in a very gentle and patient way, not in a way that like makes anyone necessarily feel bad, uh, which I th it's just something that I appreciate a lot because not a lot of tables, you know, it's a very, it takes a, you know, a very special kind of table to be able to do that, to kind of be able to do the trust fall. I, I, I think of the trust fall exercise, like this table is very much a supportive and open space. And I think that lends itself to being able to play well together. If you guys you know? keep bullying so, me, I might not be so supportive. Well, listen. <laughs> <laughs> I said I'm so one bad joke and my history on this chat was just gone, <laughs> deleted. <laughs> So technically, that's a that's a vendetta against Disso. Um, <laughs> yeah, you can take it up with God, Knight. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I don't remind Mike if you want, because you know if he talks loud enough, he doesn't even have to talk loud enough. You'll still hear him. But yeah. <laughs> so, uh, let's see who hasn't answered yet. Uh, Roman and Bex, I think. Huh? What? Oh, yeah, uh, the question, <laughs> friends. Well, why we come to the table here? Yes, like what? What do you value about this particular table? I, I have to agree with Bookish. It's, it's. I think it's the people. I mean, you can have the game, you can have your dice, you can have your character and stuff, but without, without the people here, it's, it's nothing. It's. Mm. I mean, then yeah. it's just your. Then you're just in a book. 
I and mean, it's just not the same. So yeah, I, if if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't you know I wouldn't want to keep coming back. If Aww. I didn't like y'all, I wouldn't be here. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, we gotta like each other for it to, to be here. Akita's giving you head pats. By the way, we're nice. I, gave him, I said thank you. I'm allowing him to do that. Oh, it's allowed. No. It's allowed. No. <laughs> no. Oh, wow. God. Well, wow. moving into the next question. This one is actually directed at Bookish. Bookish, um, how did you feel when Zavina had to go do a solo stealth mission? Were you worried at any point in time that she was going to die? Well, I'm a character, I'm a player who welcomes possible character death, but I was so nervous when I was I can talk. Um, when I was sneaking around, I was like, oh God, please rolls be in my favor. And they were all the way up until I got back to you guys. And then my roll started to tank. I'm like, oh, no. they, they rolled well when I needed them. Um, but I really, yeah, especially cause she had Sniv with her. Like um, she wouldn't have want, wanted him to get hurt. Um, so she was trying to be as stealthy and keep as low as possible. But yeah. Oof. It was pretty. It was pretty. It was pretty intense, um, for sure. I was surprised yeah. she, that you guys let her go by herself. <laughs> I was like, I but was it's sweating smart. Bullets. I was like, did we make the right move? It Ugh. was smart because she is one, the smallest, and mm -hmm. two, probably the stealthiest. Sneaky, yeah. sneaky, sneaky. Yeah. Sneak, sneak. She's very sneak, sneak. sneaky. Sneak, sneaker, make sneaking. Well, sneak, and sneak, sneak, sneak. with character, a lot of the characters in the former, the group formerly known as the Red Badgers, um, are very talented and have their own unique talents. And that brings me to my next question, which is for Lev. Uh, you were pretty excited when Moira started seeing spirits in the temple. How did you feel <laughs> being able to explore that side of your character? I mean, it's why I built her. So <laughs> I was, um, I mean, I've said it so many times, I made Moira not to focus on combat or or even be balanced in any sort of way like she's she's had a thing that she's been able to do and that she's honed since she was seven and that is what she does um she doesn't she hasn't practiced fighting people she hasn't you know uh increased any sort of skill like that she's spent her life learning to listen and to go find the answers to questions and it's a it's a solo task and one that involves a lot of like inquisition and investigation and just perception so i built i built her for to be a tool for a very specific part of the party so cool. i mean i loved I loved any opportunity where she got to um, see anything, like see any spirits mm -hmm. or any sort of like uh, ethereal shit going on. Um, but also I, I loved having her as like a medium for any sort of uh, inner party interaction. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, like, and I, I was thinking about this earlier today. I think Bram's the only person that she hasn't gotten like touchy with <laughs> she hasn't <laughs> gleaned true. anything from bram whatsoever to bram. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but using that and having that as an opportunity to just um like instigate inner party interaction i mm -hmm. i love any opportunity to do that i'm really sorry i keep rubbing my eye there's something in it <laughs> it's okay. it's okay take your time it's you can, your finger. But, Speaking of Bram, though, um, Bex, Bram took some time out to craft special weapons from glass for the Red Badgers. For now, until we change our, that dang team name. <laughs> what motivated uh, What motivated him to go above and beyond for a group composed mostly of strangers at the time? Um, Bram's one of Bram's biggest values is um, community. And left alone in the in in the apocalypse, this this became his community, mm. and he's an all in kind of guy. He uh, he he he's not one to like 
hold back and, and half-ass something, especially if that's the, it's the only thing around him. So glass he, all the way. Yeah, glass all the way. And then he's, <laughs> you know, like I said earlier, he's a big fan of, like, things fall apart mm-hmm. and you build them back stronger. You build them back more beautiful. And he sees that in his companions as well. That we've all... Nice. We got ripped out of reality, but we're all, we're not giving into it. We're not giving into mm-hmm. the shattered state. We're getting back into the fire and reforging right. ourselves. And so nice. I think he wanted to, he wanted to show that that's how he felt about them. Their resilience and their power through Very cool. his chosen medium, which was glass. That's fantastic. I love that. Um, and it, now conversely, Roman, um, of all of the Red Badgers, Clive seems to be the most enigmatic. Not as straightforward as Bram, I'd say. Um, especially with Clive's response to the Raven Queen's cleric at the end of season one. Are there any hints as to why he acted that way? Anything you can give us? Yeah, find out in character. <laughs> that is a hell of a hint, sir. Yep. No, no hints. No. No <laughs> hints. That's no meta. Like a, uh, yeah. Fuck meta. No meta. <laughs> Fuck no. meta. You find out. You I ask was asking me. asking for the audience, not for me, damn nope. it. Nope. <laughs> audience can right. find out if they come and watch the next season. <laughs> okay. Fuck around. That and gets find out. You're the man. I, yeah. I do, have, I do have something that I remembered that I thought was a hilarious moment linking between mm. Bram and. Moira, where Moira is seeing ghosts and she kind of does the tilt and wave, and Bram sees this and tilts and waves right back. Yeah. Oh God, I do I'm remember. Like, yeah. That was I. I have that in one of my Adventure Time s sketches that I still need I to draw. It. Where he's just waving, <laughs> but I had originally when I was doing the Adventure Time drawn, like you know the typical thin character mm-hmm. and at that time Bram was not so I'm like I gotta I gotta I gotta beef him up a bit make him more Ice King-esque <laughs> with the jacket on you know oh my God. not Ice King with the <laughs> jacket because then once he's got yeah. that jacket off he's not as big as he <laughs> looks very scary but, looking <laughs> yeah. well but yeah as we're with that said now I'm gonna turn the spotlight on to our brand new DM hey Knight how you doing Goodbye. <laughs> oh my god. Thanks for that. You left the eggplants in the chat. Yeah, we were just like, no. <laughs> you left eggplants so, in the chat? R- yes, leaves. and then freaking <laughs> Refuse tried to, to die. elaborate. Oh my god. Night. <laughs> so let me ask you how did you feel coming into this campaign as the DM for us two? We kind of went over this a little bit already. Um, were you eight? Like, were you, obviously, you said you were able to watch season one. And aside from what you've already stated, were there any other moments that stuck out to you? Uh, sh- little tidbits that you're like, ooh, I can use that. Yeah, geez, this is kind of rough because mm-hmm. a lot of my inspirations for how I want to treat characters mm-hmm. uh, come from the fact that I didn't, I didn't like how they were treated in the campaign and i don't want to say anything that would be viewed would be viewed as negative towards the previous dm uh there were some just some decisions that he made uh that i myself personally didn't exactly vibe with um right didn't agree with some of those choices i get it Mm -hmm. for 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 an example uh if i have to give one was the way Mm -hmm. he treated the raven queen um and how she how she sent her envoy this raven uh, mm-hmm. that apparently it 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 just felt really weird uh, how the raven like dove into somebody's ear and like mm. infiltrated the brain and then in order to transfer from there as an entity to somebody else he states that bram grabbed someone's face and spat in it to mm. transfer this raven in it mm. was it, it didn't feel right and it it just seemed kind of gross and almost more parasit parasitical in nature like mm. alien uh, yeah like alien. yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but that that's the only thing that i can really think of um off the top of my head on how to how I would treat that because the way I, I view the Raven Queen, right? It's kind of like how Matthew Mercer described it in Critical Role. 
Um, okay. She's very elegant. She is very, like, if I was to describe, like, you guys going into her chamber uh, mm -hmm. and viewing her for the first time within some kind of cathedral and you see her sitting there, she would be sitting very upright, just arms crossed, sitting there, just very almost queenly in prim. nature. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Prim and proper. Mm -hmm. And just, hello. How may I help you today? And just, just yeah, right. be very quiet and laid back. She is not a god of death. She is a god of passing of the dead. So I think she needs to be somebody who can be viewed as both intimidating and loving in the same way. Uh, somebody mm -hmm. who is able to calm the souls as they transfer from life to death. Okay. Because that is her domain is passage. Mm -hmm. um, and so to view her in, some, in kind of a twisted light... Mm-hmm. It just didn't, it didn't sit right with me. Like I said, there's a lot of things that the previous DM did, which those are his decisions, uh, mm -hmm. and I'll respect them. I don't think I will continue those into this campaign. Um, mm -hmm. I've already I've already worked with everybody mm -hmm. on talking mm -hmm. with you one on one on how I want how I want uh, your characters to be played. Well, mm -hmm. let me rephrase that: how I want you to play your characters. Right, right. Nah, that still doesn't. That still doesn't sound right. That still doesn't sound right. Uh, <laughs> you, you've you've basically told us you want us to play our characters the way we want to play them. Yes, yes. you've given us more freedom. I think <laughs> is what you're yes. trying to say. It's yeah. totally fine. I mean, you know what? Each DM has their own style um, of DMing, and I think that uh, the previous DM had a very distinct method of approach. Uh, you know, and sometimes we, you know, we we can disagree with choices that are made. That's totally that's totally valid, and that's fine. Uh, but can you, speaking of that, can you give us a taste of what's to come in season two for the team formerly known as the Red Badgers? Oh, jeez. All right, so. Without giving away too many spoilers. Who's wheeze yeah. laughing in the background? Do I have to smack this so again? <laughs> yes. I it, no, it's the menace you put on camera. Oh, God. How, how can I word this without giving anything away? So when we launch into episode one, uh, I will be doing a prologue discussing what you guys have been doing in the uh, three months since the previous campaign ended. Um, mm -hmm. Spoiler alert, there will be, th uh, it's three months of downtime for those uh, who are viewing, uh, who have watched season one. There'll be three months of period between the ending of that and where we pick up with this season. Um, there will be events that they have done, you know, training, montages, uh, traveling, uh, working. Uh, the biggest thing that I want to say about this is that this is almost going to be kind of a turn of the century kind of deal. Uh, one of the biggest things is that the inventions of firearms is something new. Uh, so they will be something that you may or may not see. Uh, they will definitely be something that's spared seen sparingly uh, between NPCs. So people of like the noble class uh, may have them, whereas everyone else wields swords. Uh, <laughs> why does why, Clive and like, I'm just watching, like, I'm sitting here like Clive has a gun, doesn't he? <laughs> nope, Zavina does. I don't need to heal my teammates. I don't need to heal my teammates if I can kill all you motherfuckers. <laughs> um, Strap to clap. Uh, but that's that's something small. Uh, the biggest thing is that uh, word has gone around the Sword Coast about a brand new invention that will help with the uh, expanse of trade and uh, travel for people of the non-magical and non-noble classes. Uh, it is something I'm called- I'm mind in the corner. So like, I'm just like, what is going on? I got it. <laughs> it, is, it is a thing I know commonly, you know. it is a thing commonly a known as a locomotive. Yay! <laughs> I love trains. trains. Yay. A, a very specific family has uh, decided to uh, invent this thing uh, that will help people choo travel choo. between cities. And certain certain PCs know about this already, and that may or may be why they're- People that are losing their shit, obviously, the in the squares. Uh, it is Not something us. that we have discussed. Nope. Yep, it's something very cool. I don't know anything about this. It may or may not be integral to certain people and certain stories. Nice so, 
know, nice just to drop in like this left and right. <laughs> Leave it, man. Well, Leave it. <laughs> just let it die. They already Bring see you guys speak freaking here. out. I know. Yeah. Just leave it, though. The worst come everything. Is everything. <laughs> That said, now that we've seen two people freaking out about how excited they are for the table, is there anything else that you guys are excited about going into season two? Everything. Everything. I yes. Think, yeah. I think just uh, we've had a healthy time away. Um, mm -hmm. It'll be nice to get back into the original characters that we you know we've been striving to. We strove so hard and we, 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 we got through such a... Uh, such a difficult time with, uh, you know, early stages yeah. of, of our tech stuff and all this mm -hmm. bonding and, and, you know, what have you, and obviously behind the scenes stuff. So it'll be nice, I think, to, it's like when we were talking about it during zero session, it was like Lev said, it's, it's, it's like we're, we're, we're getting a, we're sitting down at a new table, but in the same sense, we're not. So it's, right. it's, I think it's just going to be a nice refresher. And I, I really am excited just to be able to, sit back i'm you know i'll get to actually like uh role play with each of you guys in turn even with a quiet yeah. character that i have i'll still be able mm -hmm. to get to talk to you guys and uh, have that chance to to learn more about your characters and see the growth and stuff and progress a storyline uh kind of how i envision it to be so right right Tiny i'm just that family coming back together yes yes <laughs> The oh my gosh! Yes, I'm excited yeah, to there's... hang out with uh, with Bram while uh, the kids play. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, the, it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be very exciting. I'm really looking forward to more character interactions myself, um, especially because I know uh, a lot of us have established uh, more relationships in the in between, like those three months. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so and hopefully seeing a lot more about about people, people's backstories, where they come from, and you know how they handle that that's that character character stories are a big thing for me so i'm excited to see more of that <laughs> yeah clive is like yeah not getting it from me <laughs> truth motherfucker <laughs> you can think it's still live it's spell magic motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, shit. well oh, silence oh wait <laughs> That's not how that spell works, Buckish. God, you can't God. cast spells by cut off your tongue. Uh, so. Oh no! <laughs> but I can cut off my own. Oh wait. Huh. That's no. also not how that spell works. Anyway, <laughs> so dramatic. <laughs> oh my God. Well, as you all can see, we are very excited for season two of Blood Red Bedlam. Thank you so much for watching the Q and A today. Uh, we really appreciate your support of the show, and we're happy to announce we've almost reached 200 followers on Instagram. Last I checked, I think we were two followers away from that 200 mark, which is really, really cool. Um, so thank you, thank you, thank you for continuing to support the show. Um, please, you know, we we love having you here. We love we love playing this game, as you can tell. We're excited to get back to it. Make sure you save the date for uh, season two. We will be coming back on April 9th with season two, the first episode of season two of Blood Red Bedlam. Uh, and I hope to see you guys there. Uh, for now, let's see if uh, I'll look and see if we can find someone to raid on Cheers, Twitch. Night. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, night. Cheers to you. <laughs> but uh they can show a hydrated before we yeah. leave. <laughs> For sure. That's a that's Drink a good water. thing. All Drink you, water, water yo. Can I Drink like can I insert a question? I just sure. I had a question. I have to do I have to find someone to raid and then Disso has to switch screens anyway, so have I'll, boot, cool. I'll boot up stream, you can raid me. It'll be <laughs> well, well my question's I'm from you, Knight, so don't get distracted. <laughs> I want to know job, what, Knight, your, you what your favorite thing about each character is so yes. far. Uh, anyways, we're looking at a raid. Ooh. We're looking at a raid here. Uh, so, you have to uh, answer the question, homie. <laughs> I don't have to answer shit. <laughs> I ain't worried about it. I ain't worried about it. Any of this. I'm done. Answer the question. The secret bestiary that she started. No one knows where it's at, where it's Popping up. Yep. Oh there. yeah. Uh, Knight yeah. already agreed to give me a pet mimic, so we're starting strong. I didn't know such thing. <laughs> no, I didn't know such thing. I we get my owlbear mount. It's fine. Yep. I get a yeah. dragon. Yeah. I, I said we'll see what happens. Do answer the question, Knight. I'm working on an answer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping if I just keep talking, I'll eventually find something. Um, 
<laughs> so he hates this guy. I all right. So <laughs> after discussing everything with you guys and talking about backstories and trying to write things out, um, and with watching the previous the, the previous season. <laughs> I really, I really enjoy how even though all of you have made your backstories separately, none of you, as far as I know, have really conversed with each other as far as backstories go. They all kind of fit in what I have planned uh, for Ooh. this campaign. Um, Lyra, talking with Lyra and certain things, she helped me build uh, certain aspects about this world that really helped set up story plots. Uh, and very, very cool little side quests. Uh, same thing with Zavina. Uh, Zavina allowed me to have certain NPC ideas uh, that I was able to input into certain areas uh, that kind of just fit. All of you presenting, I have like this giant machine that is called my brain and all of you handing me <laughs> the gears that allow me to just stick things in places and allow everything to start turning. Um, very cool it's been it's been really cool i love i love the fact that bram gets to meet two of my favorite npcs even before the campaign starts it's going to be <laughs> great uh oh, and so that would be really that would be fun uh, but as far as favorite things about each character geez that's mm. i haven't played with any of you guys yet to really figure that out as far as i know uh i've just watched you guys play the, i have some subjective ideas uh like I love how Bram is a very loving uh, grandparent figure. Uh, that's, it's really adorable, and I think it adds a good vibe to the group. Uh, Clive just kind of being like a, okay, kind of guy. <laughs> just like, all right, uh, we'll just see how things go. Oh, uh, you want to go to Neverwinter on a vacation? Sure. You want to do hard drugs in the back alley? All right, sure. Let's go. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Yes, 100%. Yes. If someone's like, do you want an eight ball? He's like, why didn't you ask earlier? Like, <laughs> oh I, I think <laughs> like so I, I like how you have two eyes. I want it. Two eyes, hair, how... and fingernails. That's awesome. That's, That's awesome. Great. Well, um, uh, if whenever we're ready, I have. Uh, it looks like Darling Creep Show is still online, so I think that's who we're gonna hey, raid tonight. Uh, they fantastic. also have a TTRPG stream, so I hope you guys stick around for a bit uh, for that. Uh, so I'll go ahead and set that up if Disson wants to change screens for us. Thank you everyone for watching tonight. I'm excited to see you for Blood Red Bedlam season two. Bye now. <sighs> <laughs> oh my <laughs> can i get flexes in the chat let's go get flexes in the chat <sighs> oh my god there you go. Oh. Yeah, that's for flex please that's, it's actually this emote right here uh this one right there boom go check it out ah <laughs> <laughs>